Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization, was among the nation's farm leaders who conferred for two hours in Washington, D.C. with Paul Volcker, chairman of the Federal Reserve Board. They talked about credit and financial problems facing farmers and ranchers. Devon Woodland. In this meeting, I urged Mr. Volcker and the Federal Reserve System to make money available to rural banks so that it could be loaned out to agriculture producers at 10% interest for at least a 12-month period. We here in the National Farmers Organization have pointed out that this year's expected 18 to 20% inflation, coupled with the expected 20% drop in farm income, could very well mean a loss of real income of 40% or more for American farmers. That's what the actual loss in rural buying power will be if their costs go up 20% and their income goes down 20%. Farmers will be 40% worse off than they are now. I'm not overly optimistic about the Federal Reserve System making this operating loan money available at only 10% interest, but no matter what the Federal Reserve System does, Borrowed money is a poor substitute for farm income. There's an important update to the report on Devon Woodland's conference with Paul Volcker of the Federal Reserve. When Woodland and the other farm leaders told the Fed about the disaster in the making if credit were not eased. Though Woodland asked for 10% money for a whole year, the Fed did respond substantially. 13% money has been made available to country banks, even though they might not be members of the Federal Reserve. This was announced by the Fed only a week after Woodland and the other farm leaders told them the score. I asked Devon if he's hopeful. Yes, we have a plan. And the plan that we have is uh, now to organize the disorganized uh, so that those organized elements cannot be the vulture type uh, picking apart the independent uh, farmer and rancher. We're now receiving more calls into the organization, into the office, into the departments of people who are interested and want to become a part of the plans and the programs that we're now talking about to our people. We're talking about long-range programs. We're receiving into the office uh, an average of three calls per week from third world countries who are concerned about their f supply of food and they're talking contracts uh, five, ten, as much as 15 years down the road, and they want to deal with a producer organization. Devon Woodland, president of the NFO. When the hog division of the NFO stepped up its program for controlling hog numbers, we caught Alan Scraw out on the road. Alan, as head of the hog division, has been traveling for several weeks now, and he's been carrying the responsibility which most of agriculture sort of assigns to the NFO. Like when the price of hogs falls apart, they say, why doesn't the NFO do something about it? So, Alan Scraw has been out on the road talking to hog producers and other groups who might be able to motivate people. Alan, what's happening out there? Producers are holding meetings. They're putting together packages of sows that are being uh, sold collectively to uh, various plants. One example, we've got a lotus of uh, 400 sows going into a plant this week uh, from one area, but all in all it looks real good. It looks like our sow sell-off is going to be very successful. We asked Alan Scraw, well, it's only minor percentages we're talking about tipping the scales between shortage or so-called surplus, right? That's right. In fact, if you reduced it to uh, pork chops, the so-called surplus that we're dealing with, it would be one, about one pork chop per person in the United States. So really there is a shortage, not a surplus. Well, why do hog producers count on the NFO to be able to do something about it? Company representatives are hired to buy hogs cheap. Chain store buyers are hired to buy pork product cheap from the processor. But the producer has never hired anyone to sell hogs at a higher level, and that's where we come in. And what we have done is we have taken the thing head on to in an attempt to change the price structure of the entire hog industry. And that's why they turned to the National Farmers Organization. Are you generally hopeful? 
Yes, uh, there was a survey in the Des Moines paper that indicated maybe a 25 or 30 percent of the counties in the state of Iowa were participating in this. All of our collection points are. And it's not unusual to have a producer call and announce that uh, 15 to 20 percent of his sows went to market on any, any particular day in the hog department. I'm very optimistic. Alan Straw, head of the hog division of NFO. His report from out on the road. A Minnesota editor, Bill Kramer, wrote an editorial in his Wheaton Gazette, specifically urging farmers to join the National Farmers Organization. He told us in an interview that he endorsed the NFO by name, partly for shock value, but mostly because he simply believes the people who produce food and fiber aren't using or seeming to know their own strength if they don't act together in the marketplace. Here's editor Kramer on the phone. But it seems to me that in, in uh, trying to market that product, there's absolutely no way it can be done uh, successfully unless they get together and put a price on it and sell it as a, as a group. And there's no uh, reason for them not to get on with the show. They're going to do it eventually. Somebody's going to do it eventually. Uh, eventually, they're going to make money farming. Somebody is. And they could do it now. It, it really... Uh, it really bothers me because uh, I'm absolutely certain in my mind that the whole farm picture could be turned topsy-turvy in three weeks' time. I know it could be. All they have to do is get together and say, this is, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to sell as a group, and this is our price, and if you don't like it, they don't fly. And they'll get the price. Editor Bill Kramer of the Wheaton, Minnesota Gazette. We talked to Walt Hackney, director of livestock for the NFO. We first took note of a situation in the cattle market where last February, 500-pound steers stood at 85 to $90 a hundredweight, and there were high expectations on the part of cattlemen. Then we asked Walt Hackney, what happened? Well, Phil, probably what happened was we suffered the results as an organization of a tremendously successful contracting program a year ago. Last February in 1979, the organization started out forward contracting cattle. Uh, we built a base under those cattle with those um, initial forward contracts. We worked then the market up incrementally to a, oh, a point a buck or two, sometimes more, higher than the initial contracts were offered at. What happened was the success of that program was generally widespread. This year, in, in February of 1980, the membership didn't want to be the first ones to contract. They, in fact, felt that let my neighbor contract, and then I'll get the benefit of the incremental selling and maybe get four or five, maybe ten bucks a hundred more if I wait. Because they became uncontractable, in February, that 85 and 90 cent possibility that we had for the membership, all of a sudden, within a period of about six weeks, went to 70, 65 cents a pound. What kind of a program does the NFO have? Well, what we're trying to get our people to do right now is get these fleshy cattle that they have on hand and that they've in fact stayed too long with, go ahead and let us move those yearlings for them replace the cattle if they've got ample roughage and so forth at home replace the cattle get a lighter thinner kind of a steer that's got some good performance in him let us put him on a forward contract they can hit the grass with him we can contract them off the grass for him with a couple hundred pounds on them and they've got themselves a double shot they got two liquid programs in one year walt hackney director of livestock a county nfo president gave us a good report on a businessman's appreciation dinner. He is Pete DeFlemick, president of Sibley County, Minnesota, NFO. It's looking good. We had about 150 people at this uh, businessman appreciation dinner. They're deeply concerned. They're waiting for us. Why, what did they say when they say, expressed their concern? Why, and why would that cause them to want to help your NFO people put on a, put on a seminar? One banker said that that he'd never seen cash flows look as tough as they've ever looked. 
they just feel that things got to be changed around and the farmer's got to be the one to do the changing. So that would imply that he's pretty much behind the NFO seminar idea to help I, put together bargaining, doesn't it? I presume. It makes no difference what, uh, really, what uh, businessmen you talk to. They've all, uh, they all feel that they're in the same position, that uh, things aren't going to move unless the farmer can uh, get it straightened out. They feel that their business isn't going to move unless the farmers are doing okay. Huh? That's, that's right. Pete DeFlemick, president of Sibley County NFO. And now here's Ed Graff, director of the dairy department. I would hope that no dairyman would believe that because dairymen are receiving a higher percentage of parity than grain or hog producers at this time, that they may not be in a more severe cost price squeeze in the near future. And the time to act to prevent this is today. Our net number of producers in the dairy program increased again last week, not only in numbers but also in pounds of milk. This, of course, helps keep upward pressure on the market and keep strengthening our bargaining position. If you really want collective bargaining to work for producers, then you must stand up for it, because those who stand for nothing will probably fall for anything. Don't let this happen to farmers. Clarence Mauger has another dairy report. He's treasurer of the Fairfield County, Ohio, NFO. There was a organization here that had been buying milk that was closing, and they weren't certain that they were going to get their milk checks, and what made it really easy to talk to a number of these people is for the very fact that part of them had already gone through a previous bankruptcy over here and had lost 100% of their milk checks, and this one really made them shaky. So therefore, it was just a matter of going in and explaining to them the National Farmers Organization membership agreement and the dairy authorization, the guarantee of milk checks. And when you start talking guarantee of milk check to a man that's lost 100% of one and then sitting on another that looks shaky, you simply only talk to him about a half hour, explain it to him, and he's ready to join the organization. There were 17 that I have talked to and have joined the organization since last Friday, and that's in a week. This is Friday again. These farmers are more receptive now than any other time that I've ever went out to talk to farmers, and I do it daily. Now here's the vice president of the National Farmers Organization, Bob Arndt. We need to recognize that the three key economic influences in our society are the fuel supply, the money supply, and the supply of food and fiber. The money supply is organized through the Federal Reserve System, which is an independent agency, independent of the federal government. The fuel supply is organized through corporate structures, also independent of the federal government, and it has the ability to cope with the organized money supply to get their share. The supply of food and fiber, once organized through the National Farmers Organization, will also be independent from government and also will be able to cope with the organized money supply and get its share. The organized oil industry and the organized Federal Reserve money system have tremendous influence on federal government action. If farmers want to continue to be dependent on federal government, they should expect to be disappointed. Only by organizing food and fiber through the National Farmers Organization can the farmers and ranchers bring about an agricultural industry independent of the federal government influence so that they can match the strength of the organized money system. We have what money buys. Let's put it together. There is no other way. You have heard the County Information Tape Service report. This program is compiled and edited each month by Don Mack, director of the radio division. I'm Phil Allen, and that for this month is something to think about.